in the figure that you used uh, this morning, which was uh, interestingly the same figure that I came up with, that it would probably be a six-year project to, to build it. Um, and with my experience of compulsory purchase orders and how they actually work, um, they, they take a minimum or can take a minimum of three years to get through by the time you've gone through the whole process of, of issuing notices, getting confirmation of the government, uh, issuing the orders, speaking to the owners, uh, public inquiry, if that's the way it's going to go. That means that it would take nine years. So effectively, if you were going to uh, uh, be building uh, the A9 by 2025, alarm bells should have been ringing in 2017-18 uh, that that process wasn't entirely uh, moving along uh, at the pace it needed to be. Would you agree with that synopsis? Um, I think where I would take some issue with how you've characterised it is that a lot of the work was ongoing at that point. So, you know, I'll, much of the preparatory work to use that catch-all phrase uh, was ongoing um, so you know we're now sitting in a position where I think with the exception of one of the, the sections of the route all of the the orders are in place so it wasn't the case that none of that was progressing um, the the six years of course was uh, an estimate that was made um, way back I think about the construction uh, period the, the significant issue not the only issue, but the significant barrier we were grappling with at that point was funding. Uh, funding options in terms of the uh, coming up with a private finance uh, possibility versus the pressure on our capital programme. So you can have everything else in place. You can have you know, the, uh, all of the preparatory work done, but you need to have routes to funding and procurement. And that was the, that was the aspect of this that was the significant or most significant challenge. With, with respect, the funding is, is critically important. I, mm -hmm. I accept that fully. But what, what I've laid out to you is a time scale that a surveyor and, and people working within the industry would set to deliver the project, which I think from the moment you issue the first order would, would be approximately nine years. And, and that takes us back, and which is why I'm confused that it only came to light in 2023 when it actually probably should have been coming to light back in 2017. So my question is, Mr. Youssef, who was the Transport Minister in 2017-18, did he come to you and tell you there was a problem? Because if he didn't, then, then we probably found out where, where the delay started from. Um, I think that would be an unfair um, characterisation of, uh, of his position. I, I don't recall a particular... Uh, occasion where he came to me and said, First Minister, we've got a big problem with the A9. But we were, we were always looking at you know, the progress and the issues we were uh, grappling with. I think, I think it's important not to be overly binary about this. Of course it was the case that by the time we, you, you get to 2017-2018, uh, we realised that there are significant hurdles along the way to uh, completion on target. Uh, it was only at that late 2022, early 2023 point that it was uh, clear that there was no viable route to 2025 uh, and that was a funding issue. Again, you know, obviously a lot of the, the work that was necessary to get pro the sections of the project into construction was being done, had been done, so things were progressing and moving along. So it wasn't a sort of binary thing of here we are one day with none of the work done and or we don't have enough years left to do it. It was an ongoing process that we were determined to try to find a, a route to 2025. It was a diminishing prospect the closer to that you got. Obviously, that stands to reason. And we reached a point where it was clear there was no viable route to that. So in a, I suppose if I was to I can turn that question back, maybe, maybe the criticism that could be made is we were so determined to try to find a route that maybe we didn't tell ourselves quickly enough that that wasn't there. But, it, but if that is a, a valid criticism, it came not from a lack of priority or a lack of determination. It probably came from the opposite of, of desperately wanting to, to get to a position where we could deliver the target. 
Okay, and my, my final question is that I, I don't doubt your determination to deliver it, but it was clearly unfeasible by 2017 and 18, even by the figures that you've given. And surely that would have been the time to tell the people across the Highlands uh, that it wasn't going to be delivered. Because, you know, since that date, um, I think there'd be very few people in the Highlands that haven't seen or know somebody that's been killed as a result of the road. And I think we've been dishonest, or you've been dishonest by the fact that it's not deliverable by the date that, you, that your government promised in 2006 of December 2011. So I think both the points I would make in response to that I've already made, so forgive me for repeating myself. Um, firstly, it was not the case that government you know the, the advice to government was still that there was a viable route to 2025 until that point well it, that was the advice to government um and that was the now, that viable route depended on capital provision being made available and that was a significant challenge um so that's my first point so to say that we were just being dishonest i, I think is is not the case the second point though is when i I think I made in my first answer to the convener. Yes, I look back in that period and think you, we should have been airing this perhaps more publicly. I, I, I certainly think that is a reasonable question to pose. But if we were you know, guilty of something at that point, it was trying our hardest to find the route <coughs> to 2025 and perhaps uh, taking too long and this is where I'm happy to concede. We maybe just took too long to accept that it wasn't possible. Um, but if that